Okay. Okay. This video is about an art prompt that I get at least once a year. I think it's about twice a year from uh, Mist Bind Machina, um, who is a former guest on my podcast on the first season. And we've stayed in touch to a certain extent. I really enjoy her content. She does a lot of videos on Instagram and I think TikTok, which is fun. And in this video, I'm basically responding to an art prompt that she's set with um, other creators that she's in touch with. It was a few years ago, she reached out to me on Discord and I was in university at the time. And she just said, you wanna join an art group? And I joined and it was a nice way to do you know, art prompts and daily drawings and things which was keeping me practicing drawing when university was discouraging drawing and painting by just ignoring anything which I would submit that was drawn or painted. They just wanted things that were either performance or film. Uh, and it wasn't even the film scenes that I enjoyed filming. It was more in between scenes they found it. It was just very, very modern fine art stuff sorry i've just eaten i was going to film this video before eating but i've just eaten so that's why i might be a bit in between talking uh so that's what this video is about so um it, i started this on a day where i'd been preparing for the exhibition i just had at the beginning of september in fact i think preparing for it made it aug um yeah august and it was late august and I was using lots of charcoal, so I had black fingertips from using charcoal. And I started off this drawing by just making marks on the page and um, and starting it that way, which I never usually do. Um, but there we are. That's what I did because I thought that'll be a, an interesting way to maybe... So you can see there, I'm just smudging my fingers along because I thought that way I'll get a bit of a, you know, idea for where certain things can sit. And this idea immediately, the, the prompt was mushroom battle. So immediately I was quite excited to create characters based on the shapes that immediately spring to mind. And I should really have looked online at different fungus and mushrooms and things because there are lots of different shapes and I did very few different shapes but it was still a fun um, prompt for me to engage with because it's just great great kind of basic forms to develop into personalities and there has to be so many for it to be considered a battle so it gave me the opportunity to create faces and expressions and emotions and uh, interactions between different battling warriors, I suppose, in this fight. And um, some of the ideas I didn't really, you know, I didn't hesitate, which is a bit of a bad habit of mine, really. I think hesitation is sometimes uh, what you do when you are considering something and you can develop an idea with thoughts and use a sketchbook but as always with this I just jumped straight in and thought no I'll just do it doodle style and I don't think it hurts but I do think in the future I would benefit from pausing and taking a moment to formulate a, a more a more uh, I don't know a more layered concept but it is fun. I mean, you can see here I've got one biting another because I thought that's something I haven't done. I've done one mushroom wrapping around another and snapping it because mushrooms snap from the stems and they're quite a nice dull sound when they snap. And um, I thought I could have a mushroom biting another mushroom. I just wanted it to be something which people could feel and have experienced the sounds and textures of mushrooms in these situations and so when these attacks or these you know 
situations happen on the page, it's something people can understand and relate to. Um, and then there's a bit of an afterthought here where I thought I'll do this one because it's kind of like a shiitake mushroom. I'll do it as if it's a whirring blade, as if it's been spinning around and it's just sliced another one. But I didn't do it spinning. It's almost like it's just flying down in a diagonal from, uh, you know, top left to, sorry, top right to bottom left. So it's just slicing the stem of the other mushroom. Um, but you can see it's starting to have this top right to bottom left motion. And that's nice, but I needed it to maybe balance on both sides. And that's what all the marks were on the page initially was, you know, this is where things can sit. All these marks disappear afterwards anyway, but for the start of the drawing, I thought it'd be nice to have some basis for where things can be on the page. And yeah, I, I mean, it's sometimes I thought this could be a button mushroom and this could be one of those mushrooms which has spots on it, which I don't really know a lot about mushroom uh, variants or variations. I don't know what you call them or I don't know if you call them breeds or genus. I, I don't really know, but I don't know enough about them basically to really elaborate on what it is that I'm drawing. It's just literally what I could think in my fairy tale imagination of mushrooms. Um, and then I like this guy just because his eyes are out either side. He's like, wow, ah, like a war cry. Like it's, uh, you know, like you see scenes in war films where someone's just shooting and just going, ah, they just got insane. And that's kind of the uh, emotion I thought I captured with this guy who was wrapped around this mushroom and snapped the mushroom in two places. Um, so you've got the stem separating before the cap and then before the lower part of the stem as well. You'll be able to see this anyway, you know what I'm talking about. Then I had the thought to maybe add a harder edge on one side of all the mushrooms so that you have a suggested shadow side and a bit of a line weight differential, which um, using this calligraphy pen, I thought I would have more varied line weights, but it is, um, fairly nice and easy to control but you don't get that brush pen quality where the lines are varied in a nice interesting way and then I thought right okay time to have some kind of you know cocked eyebrow <laughs> mushroom you know the real uh, personality coming through and I like seeing the underside of the mushrooms where you've got all of these different loops and arcing lines underneath the mushroom that's something which i think is quite aesthetically pleasing and i tried to include that a few times sometimes it works better than others this one as well headbutting the one who's slicing the other so it's a bit of a double action on one side he's cutting the mushroom behind him which i don't know if you can see that well and then more prominently you can see that he's actually being headbutted um just below his mouth by another mushroom and i should have maybe overlapped the two forms a bit more because as it is, it looks as though they're just about to connect. Whereas in truth, I should have done it like that so that he's overlapped the stem of the other. But there we are. And then some mushrooms who aren't being hit or hitting and they're just in the middle of the melee. Because those are quite fun as well, doing reaction faces. And, you know, not everyone's going to be hitting or getting hit at the same time. So I thought doing a few of the faces they're quite cute i think they're quite you know sweet little mushroom forms um yeah it was fun i like stuff like this um i mean i didn't get the opportunity to really make a meal out of it i mean sorry for the pun i didn't mean it like that i mean i didn't get to make a meal out of the drawing because i was so busy with the exhibition so i just thought i need to get this done now because um the deadline's coming up soon for this art prompt and it turns out i've done it over a month ahead of everyone else because it still hasn't been posted as far as I'm aware. But I'm going to be posting this video because you're going to get the exclusive on everyone's work. But still, it's, uh, you know, it's coming up soon. I'm going to show you other people's work. I don't know if everyone's is completely finished, but I'm showing you what I've been given because I've asked permission to show it and I've been granted permission to share the work with you. Um, 
because initially I was just, you know, pushing to get a a uh, black and white drawing like this. So I thought this is quite nice. Now I should have left those circles like that because I assumed it was going to be black and white. I kept filling them in with hatching so that it would suggest red or, you know, a burgundy color in between the spots. And it turns out that was something which I had to undo anyway. <laughs> You'll see in a minute, but it's, uh, at the time I thought, yeah, I'll be fine. I'm going to be submitting this as the black and white piece. I think it works quite nice as a black and white drawing. And I don't dislike it. I think it's uh, interesting and fun. I think it's already got quite a nice composition as it is. You know, it's got some uh, little tall, skinny mushrooms and then some of the more broad, wider mushrooms and uh, different shapes intersecting here and there. And now I'm just trying to follow all of the stems down to the bottom so that it's not a weird cutoff point um, halfway up the page. So that was something which became a bit of a consideration where I thought, right, I've got to think about where these lead down to and what it's going to look like at the ground. And then I thought I'll put a big mushroom that's in the foreground that you can't see just so that it looks like it goes on and on into the foreground of where we are looking from and consider that maybe there'll be something in the distance. So that's why I started doing um, these silhouetted mushroom forms because I thought this will suggest that the battle goes on behind all of these mid-ground action scenes that we're focusing on. And plus they're nice little shapes to have these um, ovals and diagonal uh you know, um, lines. <laughs> I'm trying to think of another word for it. But yeah, diagonal lines coming down to to show a basic representation of the forms. You have to be careful to not go through, because I've not, you know, done any detailed hatching on the stems. I had to be careful not to forget where the stems led down to, so not to overlap them with the background stuff. It may seem easy, but sometimes you lose track of, what things are if you haven't differentiated it from anything else it all becomes just white and black so yeah that was a consideration at this point but i was quite enjoying the idea of this is just the finished image and this was what i was gonna submit so it's the last little mark on the right hand side get this in didn't need to do the stem just a suggestion if that's where it is. Now, then I got shown what other people were submitting. This is Miss Bynes' piece. And this is another artist as well who submitted their work. And I think it's just fantastic. They look great. So, hey, Mushroom. Yeah, check this out. This is... I just want to say, I'm sorry. This is Miss Bynes' TikToks. And, and that she was also puts them on Instagram. Just because you grew here underneath <laughs> our favourite tree doesn't mean we don't belong here. The non character is on in the foreground and then look at the mushroom look at the mushroom look at that isn't that cute it's, it's great I love the blue colour and the yellow asleep. eyes great colour combination Are you kidding and I love how flat the all the effort is. of apologising waiting for it to be still <laughs> sleeping <laughs> forget this mushroom I've never seen Arm be this aggressive 
fuck of that. <laughs> it's home, dude. It's supposed to be. Um, Mushroom star, right? You know, um, oh, enlightenment oneness. Mushroom. <laughs> so, yeah, that's great. Love it. So, after that, I thought, right, okay, come back in, click subscribe, support um, MonkBot on. And then, right, I thought, that's it. I'm going to be uh, digitizing my drawing. So that's the second stage of this submission of mine. Uh, and look at how dark that pink looks for the stems. The interesting thing is, is that I, I do this color, and I think this could be too dark if it is, and I'll just change it later because it's all on a layer. So I'll just highlight the layer and cover it all with a lighter tone if I have to, or this could be the shadow tone, but it completely changes. And this is the important difference if you're painting or doing digital drawing or whatever, any kind of color theory that you need to understand is that colors are only, they only look the way they do in contrast to what's surrounding them. So this is being surrounded by black and white, mostly white. So it looks like quite a deep mid-tone. Whereas when I change the background, from white to orange, it completely transforms this pink into a very, very light off-white. So it's kind of a peachy pink. It's almost a flesh tone, what you'd call in, um, in paints, it'd be called flesh tone, which it shouldn't be called flesh tone, but there we are, that's what it's called. Um, and it's quite nice, I think, for mushrooms. It's fine, but it looked a bit dark to me, and I thought I may need to lighten this. But check out what happens. I mean... I do pick through this quite slowly. I'm not the fastest digital artist at the moment, but I'm working on just practicing doing this process. But yeah, look at that now. Change the background to uh, to orange and all of that pink turns into off-white. So that is a bit of color theory there. And I quite like the orange at this point. I'm thinking maybe I should keep the orange. It's you know, that looks kind of like a Agent Orange Vietnam wartime vibes, and that could make sense. Um, but I wasn't certain, so I thought, I don't know, I'll have to give this some thoughts. So I'm now erasing all of the stuff which I've covered so that I can have clean um, mushroom caps and eyes and mouths for different colours. And again, this colour for the uh, cap of the mushroom, I thought it's kind of a bluey gray i don't know maybe this is not what i'm going to use but i'll just put it in for now and it's on its own layer so i can just highlight it later and figure it out then and it's the same as the um bit with the spots i thought that's got to be a different color but for now i'll just color it in so that i can highlight it and change the color easily later which is something which i recommend doing because it makes things so much easier to uh to just do it all in one go and then you can highlight it and change it afterwards so i recommend that um but yeah it all transforms the more colors you add the more it's, it just looks completely different and it's it's quite fun now i must confess the brush that i use is a bit textured but i quite like the brush so even though it should probably be a flatter brush i i'm gonna stick with this brush i quite like it it's um it can make it a bit tricky as far as um, as far as you know you'll cover something and then it'll create gaps because it has a natural texture to the brush. If you want to do a flat color on something, it sometimes won't be the best brush to do that with. Um, so yeah, I'm just trying to pick through and, and you know some of the forms have become um, instead of being like clean lines that the black is sort of gone connected in parts where it's thinner stems for the mushroom so i'm using the eraser on that layer to try and make a clean line going through and now at this point i'm trying to remove the underside of the mushrooms just because i'm thinking the more color i add the more personality it's given so i need to remove that and this is the point now where i think all of this hatching to suggest red on the inside of this mushroom cap needs to now be um, needs to now be clean because I'm going to color it. And 
that has to happen for each of them. So that was a bit laborious. That was something which I regretted my initial decision to hatch, but that was because, like I said earlier, I assumed it was going to be submitted as a black and white piece, and it wasn't. And I'm glad it wasn't because this is much more personality to the piece than it had earlier. I'd already had the exhibition at this point, so I was in the stage of difficult negotiations about uh, all kinds of stuff, all kinds of drama. I'll talk about it on my Patreon more than here. So yeah, I add um, color to the, um, to the spotted mushroom caps, and then I use the darker uh, mushroom caps as shadow, and instead add a lighter tone of that for the main color, which I think works pretty well. Um, I'm sure there was a better way, like maybe I could have gone bluer, but for this, for now, I thought it kind of works. Uh, I should have maybe varied the tones because they're all the same tone. I think if I would have changed them for each one, it would have made them each have personalities. Um, not each and every mushroom, I just mean each type. So some are more like button mushrooms than others. And I didn't do that. I should have maybe made them darker if they had a wider cap. Um, but yes, the point being is that I was in negotiations with uh, the gallery and certain aspects of exhibiting and arranging things for other exhibits that are coming up because we're currently on the 25th of September today. When I recorded this, it must have been a week or so ago when I did the digital version of this because it was much, much later. It was a month after I'd done the uh, the black and white drawing. Yeah, so I was just in negotiations about things. So I thought I'll spend most of the day doing this. And it wasn't most of it. It was just kind of picking through and doing bits and then taking a break and doing other things and then doing more bits. A lot of my job is doing video stuff. But that's how it turned out. I think it's quite nice. I enjoyed making it. And I'm going to do more of that in the future. I think it's uh, something which really brings to life the piece and... Otherwise, the flat 2D stuff is cool, but it's not, it's just not got that depth and personality that's added with that digital coloring process. <clears throat> Forgive me, got a dry throat one minute. So that, I'm glad that I did that. And every time I do it, I learn something from it. And as much as it's not the end, it's not been officially um, uploaded by uh, Miss by Machina yet. It's still, I've submitted it to her, so I'm considering it done. So I'm not going to continue changing the mushroom cap colors because I just think I have other things on my plate at the moment. I've just done another exhibition. The one which I've just done is in a place called Bethesda. Now I know there's some kind of gaming thing called Bethesda, which is quite interesting, but the place I'm talking about is a lovely little town in North Wales and it's the Ogwen River Festival and there's a little woodland uh, just behind the main town high street and you go along it. It's kind of, there's a river that runs through there and a woodland where performers go and artists put up work. And I just had a couple of small pieces that I put up there really small, but, um, but I liked having them and people noticed it and, you know, I had nice feedback, which is lovely. And then I also spoke to some great artists in a chapel in Bethesda where they exhibit work, which is framed 2D drawings and paintings, which I think is probably better suited to me next year. I might put my work in there instead. I, I don't know. I mean, if I can come up with something that's sculptural, then I'd still put something in the woods. But at the moment, my um, idea was just because it was pieces that didn't make it into the exhibition, which is currently on in Carnarvon. It is on until the 7th of October, which is only a couple of weeks away until that's done. The next exhibition I have coming up is on the 6th of October, which is interesting. It's the day before the end of the Carnarvon exhibition. And um, there's been some arrangements I've had to make for that because I've made a film for that exhibition. And I'm also drawing a 2D piece on black paper. And I'm not quite halfway through that yet. I really want to try and pull it out. I've done all the hard part, I think, because I've done loads of dots on big, you know, circular forms. And 
no, I just need to heighten the tonality uh, using soft pastels, I think, because I found that coloured pencils just don't have the pigmentation that I need or the strength and saturated um, pigment that I need to really make things look luminous. So that's what I'm working on at the moment. Um, so this was just a nice break from that because it's completely different from everything else that I'm doing. And I love this type of work as well, but it is a different side of art making. Oh, excuse me. So there we are. That is the mushroom battle. And that should be up on Instagram soon. I'll put links to Mistbound Machina's um, Instagram and um TikTok, if I can find her TikTok, and I'll also ask her who the other artist is so that I can credit them because I'm not positive who the other artist is, but I love their panels and sections of different um, mushroom types as if it's a Street Fighter game. That was great. But yeah, lovely artwork and lovely video from uh, Miss By Machina. Support her on MonkBotOm on TikTok and Miss By Machina on uh, Instagram. You can support me on Instagram and support me on uh, YouTube by subscribing and liking the video and leaving me a comment. That'd be amazing. And also I do have a Patreon. So if you can, you know, afford to pay $3 a month to support me, that'd be great. But if you can't, then don't worry. I will be uploading videos about twice a week on this channel. And uh, the videos on Patreon are once a month, but they are a bit more, a bit more kind of, Stuff that I won't talk about on YouTube and um, stuff that I won't show on YouTube. It's just uh, specific footage that I'm storing up and stories that I'm holding on to. Um, so, yeah, it's fun to have the two different platforms to express frustrations and excitements on. So that's what that is. That's it. Um, yeah, I think that's it. How do you end these videos? Cut.